Thank you. Fantastic. Good morning. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am super, super excited to be here. Um, when I looked at the lineup of what's happening over the next couple of days, you know, all the speakers, all the cool stuff that's happening, uh, I was absolutely gobsmacked, as, as uh, we say where I'm from. Okay? Um, so I think we're going to have an incredibly exciting uh, three days. And before I start, would you mind joining me in just giving the organizers just a huge hand for putting all of this together? Absolutely amazing, and I, I can't wait to get started. That being said, I'm absolutely terrified of standing in front of you now. One, because of all the speakers and all the people who are experts in their fields out there, but also because I'm actually going to tell a, a pretty personal story about how I get involved and actually published my first open source project when I joined Google. So for many of you guys, you're experts in the open source world, and what I'm thinking of doing today is actually sharing my personal story of how in the second week of my job at Google, my boss asked me to publish open source code for the first time in a language I'd never used using a service that I'd never heard of before. So uh, I'm a little bit terrified. Um, what I do hope, though, is for those of you who have been thinking about you know, contributing to open source, getting involved, maybe you know, sharing my story will help you as well if you were scared as I was, you know, making all the mistakes and so forth, to just do it, try it out. And I also want to give a, a few learnings that I found out as I went through my journey, okay? And in passing, if I can share a little bit of detail about, you know, some of the cool stuff that's happening on the open source front in Google, then I will have accomplished it. Um, we're also running a little bit late. So I'm going to try to make my talk a, a, a lot shorter so that we get to coffee break uh, on time. You do not need to take photos of any of my slides. I'll give you a GitHub link at the end where all the links and everything are. OK, so just take a photo of that. OK, applause. Wow, OK, is that to get off stage or is that to <laughs> not to take photos? Um, and uh, yeah, so let's, let's get started. So I'll talk about three things. First of all, I'll share just very quickly a few of the projects um, that is related to uh, Google Cloud. Now, these are not owned by Google Cloud, and these are my personal picks, okay? But Google Cloud, where I work, um, we do have managed services in this. So they're kind of related, but they're not owned by Google Cloud necessarily, okay? The second is how do you contribute? How do you actually get involved and contribute to some of these projects? And I'll share a few of the learnings that I had in terms of you know, code review, uh, reading the guidelines. But actually, most important of all, has nothing to do with technology. It's about my thoughts on how people feel about open source. And hopefully, by me being up here, opening my heart and sharing my fears uh, when I got involved and all the things I was terrified of, maybe it'll, hopefully it'll make even one of you, uh, you know, more confident to just try it out. Um, and that's actually the most important thing in my talk, just how can we actually help each other uh, share stuff. So without ado, um, I thought I'd share a little bit about how I think about Google. I've only been in Google for about two years. I'm not an expert in all of these things, but in my discovery, I found that as Google got started, they created a lot of really impressive, fantastic, you know, world-leading technologies to solve problems that they had at huge scale. And you see some of them here, right? Um, for example, internally in Google, we run everything on containers. And we have container management systems called Borg, et cetera, and we've contributed to a lot of container technology. But what tended to happen a lot, from what I can see, is we published you know, leading kind of research papers. Um, and I had the privilege of meeting Doug Cutting when he was here in Singapore last time. I don't know if he's in, in stage, but he also talked about how you know, when he created Hadoop, he took inspiration from you know, the MapReduce paper and so forth. So a lot of papers you know, were published, and the open source community, you know, leaders and, and great people took some of those ideas and incorporated them into, you know, extremely popular and fantastic open source projects. But there's been another development as well, and that is that in addition to publishing research papers, Google is now also open sourcing and actually giving away a lot of this to other organizations, a lot of the new uh, products. So I'll talk about a few of them today. 
The first one is around containers and distributed systems. And in the interest of time, I'll go very, very quickly. I'll have links to all of this in the end, so don't worry if you don't catch everything. But in terms of containers, Google has been working on containers for a long time for internal use. So if I, you know, internally want to deploy workloads inside of Google, it de gets deployed on containers. Okay? And as part of that, Google has also contributed a lot of stuff. So if you look into the Linux kernel, I know there's a, a few Linux kernel contributors in here in 2006, you know, you'll see some contributions to C groups, for example, to the Linux kernel. Okay? Now, based on a lot of experience, uh, about running Borg and running containers at scale inside of Google, you know, Google also initiated a project around Kubernetes to take a lot of the good practices of Borg, but also add lots of other stuff that maybe wasn't so good and created Kubernetes. And you may all know about Kubernetes, but the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation, you know, uh, organizes that. Um, right now, I believe Red Hat and Google are the two biggest, you know, corporate contributors. But as I travel around uh, Asia Pacific and Japan, I meet companies from all over um, uh, the Asia Pacific Rim and from all kinds of industries that are either contributing or using Kubernetes. Okay. And Kubernetes is obviously a project that if you are, you know, very confident and you know your stuff in, in, in distributed systems and you like Go because it's written in Go, um, of course you can contribute to the core project of Kubernetes. My personal opinion is if you're like me, who's not an expert and, and super deep, you know, contribute to, to the core code base may be a little bit hard to get into, okay? But definitely go for it if you can. Um, but there's a lot of these auxiliary projects that kind of grow up around these mega projects. And the one I want to highlight is the Kubernetes dashboard. So that's like a user interface to Kubernetes. And it's a smaller community, fewer developers. But most importantly, um, my good friend Ian, who's out of Japan, he's actually offered, if anyone's interested, to personally mentor you and get you on board into this project. So if you're interested, just see me in the pavilion afterwards. Um, so the, there are many of these kind of small um, projects. Uh, small in a relative sense. I'll, I'll come back to that. The second area, and the theme of this conference as well, is around machine learning. And what I'm really passionate about, and, and we were talking about Tom Mitchell's 1997 book, I call it the blue book on machine learning. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites. I can't say I understand everything in it, but one of the things that really excites me about machine learning um, is you know, how accessible it is to everybody. And somebody has already mentioned TensorFlow uh, today. And TensorFlow obviously is incredibly popular. I think on GitHub, you know, it's, it's the most popular kind of uh, machine learning uh, environment. Um, but actually around TensorFlow as well, there are a lot of auxiliary products that you can uh, um, uh, contribute to. Um, I should probably say, you know, TensorFlow is great because you can run it on all kinds of platforms. It runs on the cloud, it runs, you know, on premises, etc. Um, but what I want to skip to is actually, actually this. Uh, anybody know what this is? It's not a trick question. Yeah, it's a picture of me, right? Um, why am I putting a picture of myself up here? Um, actually, last week, um, I don't know if anyone was at the tech, tech, Women Tech Makers event last week. Anybody? Ah, yeah, one, one person. So we did a TensorFlow workshop for the Women Tech Makers uh, last weekend. And one of the projects that we used was to blend, so using machine learning models, to blend the style of a painting or an image with the content of another image, okay? So if you think of this picture of me, okay, as the content, I can then blend it with famous painters to get results like this, okay? So in machine learning, it doesn't all have to be super serious. It can be a lot of fun as well. And there's links to this project that you could play out and you could even mix different styles from different painters uh, on your own pictures. Loads and loads of fun. Data analytics. So in data analytics, you know, big data is another very, very uh, hot, uh, hot topic. Um, inside Google, Google, you know, spent a lot of time developing MapReduce, as we talked about. Um, but in recent years, it's actually uh, de been developing a lot of other internal products. And part of what happened with those internal products was an externalization into what we call Apache Beam. So it's an Apache project. Um, and we have a, a managed service on cloud called you know, Dataflow where you can run it. 
But Apache Beam is a unified programming model where you can do real-time streaming and batch processing you know, with the same code base. In addition to being unified, you can also, you know, you basically create pipelines, data pipelines, but you don't have to run it on a Dataflow runner. You can run it on a Spark runner, for example, for batch processing, or you can run it on a Flink runner for, uh, you know, real-time and, and streaming processing. So you can kind of pick and choose. And in addition to contributing to Apache Beam, you can also pick some of these sub-projects if you're particularly interested, for example, in Spark. And speaking of Spark, we also have, um, in cloud, we have a product called Dataproc, which is a managed service for running Hadoop and Spark workloads, okay? So what you can do is you can get involved in this project and create a lot of, um, you know, you can contribute to the, the core, but also uh, what I find quite interesting is, is this project, data uh, the initialization actions, because you don't even have to submit code, you can just submit configuration file, initiation ac initialization actions, that's really tough to say. Um, that actually allows you to install third-party tools on your data pro cluster, for example. And it's just config files. So you don't have to be a coding expert if that's not your gig. Finally, I know this is a lot of stuff, and the links are at the end. Um, a lot of these projects, you know, may require a little bit of core knowledge and some time to, to investigate. But there is a lot of client software connectors uh, and other pieces that you can contribute to. And the main landing page is this one here on Google Cloud Platform. And I counted yesterday, there were 483 different GitHub repos here alone. Okay? And this, you know, includes connectors to different, uh, you know, data analytics tools. It includes clients. And that's not even including projects where you can um, implement Google Cloud support or help implement Google Cloud support for third-party services, configuration management tools, and so forth, okay? So I guess my message to you is maybe you didn't know much about Google Cloud before, okay? Or that you could get involved in projects, but literally in that ecosystem, there's a lot of projects that you can get in, uh, involved in depending on your interests. So. Now I've talked a lot about kind of some of the stuff you can get involved in. Um, in terms of my personal story, when I started in Google, I was asked to implement uh, something in R. I'd never done R before, and I was uh, going to publish a predictive analytics uh, solution using BigQuery, which is our data warehousing tool, and R. So I started implementing this stuff and learned a lot along the way about how to get uh, stuff published inside Google. It's not as easy as you might think uh, sometimes. But I published it after a lot of sleepless nights and, and weekends uh, working on it. But then I was actually presenting that solution uh, in Taipei uh, in a workshop. So we were working through the examples in GitHub um, and people were implementing you know, this R uh, logistic regression as it, uh, as it was. And I always considered myself, you know, the outsider. I considered myself the person who'd kind of faked it. I cheated. You know, I kind of got this published, but I kind of didn't know exactly what I was doing and kind of making it up as I went along. And I always thought, you know, the people who are leading these open source projects and so forth, they're like demigods who, you know, everything, know everything about everything. Okay? So I delivered this workshop in Taipei, and I went back to my hotel in the evening, and then something happened. And what happened went something like this. I don't know if you know this. Knock, knock. Who's there? Thank you. Pull request. So one of the geniuses in my workshop had realized I'd made a mistake. And he'd raised a pull request. And I was like, oh dear, what do I do now? And what I realized is overnight, or during that, uh, that little time, I'd gone from kind of the outsider and the contributor to now being a leader for this little, very insignificant GitHub repo. So now, you know, how I got back to that individual was very, very important. What if that individual was just as scared as I was pushing that, you know, pushing that origin master time the first time? What if that person had to really, really, really dig deep to get the courage to raise this pull request? So what should I do? How should I treat it best? Okay? And we'll get back to that in just a moment. So the first thing um, that I, I started doing was to do a code review, because all of you do code reviews for sure, right? 
Now, what I would say is a lot of times if you get involved with um, very mature uh, projects and inside Google, for example, the culture inside Google is very, very code review heavy. There's a lot of code review and people get very, very detailed in the code review. Um, I got permission from my friend Tepe-san in Japan. He was doing a contribution to a big table client um, and he spent a few months going through code review, uh, you know, into excruciating detail, okay? And if you're like me, if you already feel like you're not the best in Java or whatever programming language you had, you know, those things can be really, really scary. Somebody really smart who knows everything about the repo saying, oh, you may want to think about changing that and changing that and changing that, okay? But don't look at it as something to be feared. Look at it as a learning opportunity. And if you're the leader who's doing the code review, as in this case, you know, just be nice, be considerate, be patient. And I'll give a couple of other tips as well that I learned along the way. The other thing is, actually, I had a fancy animation here. Let me try that again. Does that work? Yes, perfect. Um, also, if you're wondering about um, what kind of style, because in, in projects, it's often good to have similar styles, right, across different developers. Um, you may not know this. I had no idea we had so many style guides. Uh, I'm a bit of an Emacs guy, so Lisp, you know, uh, is nice. Um, but you can find these style guides, and if you want to, you know, use those style guides for your project. They're very, very detailed, and they allow, you know, a very consistent interface uh, when you're uh, developing code. My personal preference, and I'm, not, I'm probably the worst developer in Google, I'm probably the worst in this room as well, but I always try very hard to write for readability. So make it easily readable if you're sharing with others. Not do too many clever things, just make it simple uh, and, and readable. And a couple of other tips so that I picked up as I learned. You know, start small. Pick something, you know, that's on the, maybe on the fringes or um, something that can be done in a short period of time that doesn't require a lot of skill. Uh, some of these code bases are very, very big. Do some homework. So most of these projects have contribution guidelines that you should go and read, okay? Make sure you've read everything about contributing. You know, do they prefer you emailing them directly? Do, you, uh, do they prefer you opening a bug and going through a formal process? Just do some homework before you, uh, you start contributing. Whatever you do, I wouldn't recommend, you know, spending months creating the next great version of the software, send a pull request, and then, you know, be disappointed if, if it doesn't work out. And finally, and this is super important, and actually my team does a lot of this, code is not everything. In fact, it's often a very small part of the overall projects. So there's everything from documentation, creating tutorials and examples, arts, graphics, translations. I mean, I work across Asia Pacific, just translating things, and often it's translating from Japanese, because when I search for very specific technical terms, I normally end up with a Japanese blog who solved exactly that thing, so I can see all the commands in English, and everything else is just gibberish to me. So translation is another, you know, super important uh, contribution. If you're a leader, and maybe you don't consider yourself a leader yet, but just like me, you know, you don't have to be, you know, a demigod to be a leader. You can be a small leader for, for a very small part. If you are a leader, just realize the potential impact you have on the people who want to work with you on the project. Just realize that you don't have to show off how clever you are or anything like that. Just consider you can have an outsized impact on the people. Many of you will be busy, and it's okay to be busy. What I try to do is I send an email back I say, listen, I'm really, really busy. It's probably going to take me a few weeks, maybe, to get back to you. But at least they hear something back and they don't have to wait for it um, and, and be on tender hooks. And it is possible, I think, to be honest and kind, even in a code review. So just try to be uh, nice and, and kind to each other is my uh, feeling. Kubernetes Project has a great community expectation guidelines document that I think is, is, is a great example of, of how to uh, engage each other. And uh, if you are interested, uh, this is my tiny bit of claim to fame. You know, it's not exactly a top-ranking project. I think I have 70 stars or something. But hey, if R and BigQuery is your thing, you know, have, have, have a look at that stuff. Um, and a couple of appeals. Uh, so first of all, this is our stand outside. So if you want to visit the Google stand, come and talk to me or, or any of my colleagues. Uh, I think we have some coffee coming up uh, and chat to me and, and my colleagues about anything you want. And this is the promised link. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there for a little while whilst you can take a, a photo of it. Um, my name is really, really hard, but if you're a local, um, my surname is Roti. Okay, so uh, Roti, like Roti Prata, Roti Chennai, you know, all of that. 
And I take a lot of fast food orders. My email is roti at google.com. So if you feel hungry, not rotiprata.google, you know, just roti at google.com. Feel free to email me. If I'm super busy, I'll probably email you back saying, hey, it may take me a few days to get back to you, okay? But do reach out. Uh, if any of this was of interest, I'll be around uh, hanging out outside as well. And most of all, have just an amazing, amazing experience for the next three days. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oivin Roti. <laughs>